Good morning, everybody. Uniquely the Lady Charlotte, and I know it's been a long time, but I've been extremely busy. I know, don't look at me directly in the face because I don't have on any makeup. Well, I have on eyebrows and a little bit of brown eyeliner. But that's because after I go to work today, I said I'm going to work, um, I'm gonna go to the gym. So it didn't make sense for me to put on makeup and I'm gonna go to the gym. Cause I'm gonna get in there and pound it out. Exercise, exercise, exercise. So this is an update video of everything that's been going on in my life. And uh, we'll start with, with Kiana. As you both know, I mean both, as you all know, Kiana was um, in critical condition and they told us to call the chaplain in. But God turned it around and Kiana um, plateaued. She stopped deteriorating. She stopped going downhill. And she was just at a, hold, at a holding pattern. She didn't get better. She didn't get worse at that time. It just, it just stopped. And we were thankful for that because she was going downhill fast with a respiratory illness that seems to be plaguing a lot of people, found out. Um, my sister Nene told me that the CDC did a special on one of the news channels about a respiratory um, illness that's going around and it's killing people. And it seems to affect people with breathing problems, first and foremost. So I went onto the CDC website and I saw a lot of things about respiratory um, illnesses about the, you know, with people who are doing vaping, you know, they smoke those electronic cigarettes or, or the, um, I don't even know if they're doing the electronic cigarettes. It's vaping. That's where they put the little chemical in the, in the pipe and they smoke it. it looks like crack. That's what it looks like to me. I don't know. But, um, so there's, a, oh, lung disease. That's what they're getting. Lung disease. They're connected the two with vaping and lung disease, severe lung disease. So anyway, um, but there, there was a little piece on there about a respiratory illness as well. So, Kiana, you know, she got in the hospital. She woke up out of coma, and she got in the hospital, and she's doing well. She's doing well. She's starting to exercise. She goes walking to try to build her lung power back up, and um, she's been looking for a job, and she's going to come down this way um, until she can, you know, get back on her feet. So, let's see. So, Kiana's recovered. She borrowed my car. What was it? It was Monday or Tuesday. She borrowed my car and came down here for a job interview because she lives, Kiana lives about two hours from me. So she came down here to a job interview because she's going to come stay with her sister for a little while. Just to save up some money. And um, I was at work and she called me and she was on the way to come get me. And she called me. She's like, Mom, do your car cut off sometime? No, my car don't cut off sometime. It never cut off. Why would it be cutting off today? It's only three years old. She said, well, mom, your car keep cutting off, and, I have, and I'm on the highway, and I have to keep getting off the highway, you know, pulling over. And anybody that has a car, one car, and you let somebody borrow it, that's the last thing you want them to say, that you have a car problems. Because you weren't having car problems before then. That changes your whole mood. It makes you mad. Then you start thinking, how am I going to get to work if I got to get my car repaired? Where am I going to get the money from? And what the heck is wrong with my car? Is it still covered under warranty? Is it April three years old? I don't even have 100,000 miles on the car yet. It's getting close. But not yet. It, it, and is it a recall? I looked online for a recall. Because she kept saying, Mom, your car keep cutting off. I said, well, how much gas in the car? She's like, it's got two bars. Okay, well, that should get you to Salisbury, you know, from where she was. That should get you to my job. She said, like, Mommy kept cutting, it keeps cutting off. She was scared, I was scared, and mad. Huh. <sighs> Y'all know how it is when your car acting up. Or, or only transportation, your truck, anything, acting up. So she finally gets to me. But now I gotta take her all the way up near Chapel Hill to take her home. So I'm like, oh my goodness. So now am I gonna make it? So I was talking to a couple people and they said, okay, it's already on two bars. So what you need to do is you need to, you need to put some Lucas in it or some STP, put that in there and then fill it up with like some premium gas. And then it'll get all the gunk out. Cause the day before I did run it down until it was um two bars. 
So they said I might have sucked up some trash, maybe. All right, now when she gave me the car, when she got the car back to me, it was flashing. It was flashing, and it had these numbers on the side, like for, I don't know what, I still don't know what the miles, I mean, them numbers mean. It say 44, then it jump up and say 48, then it go back down and say 45, then it jump up and say 52. And so I don't know if that how many miles I have left to drive, because if that's the case, my stuff don't know how many miles left I got in the tank. So the numbers jump around like that, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. Right, so first thing I got to do is go get some fuel put in the car. So I did, you know, I did that. But I was scared because, you know, I was I just didn't want to mess up my car. I didn't really know what this stuff was going to do. I've heard what it can do. I just didn't trust it because this is my only form of transportation. And I don't want to go putting stuff in it that ain't supposed to be in it because that's what they used to do in the old day or something. I don't know. So I get to the gas pump. And this guy says, I just went and asked him, got behind me. I went and asked him. He said, yeah, you got to put some Lucas in it. He said, Lucas is the best. Put some Lucas in it. All I know is about STP. I mean, I don't know any other brands. But anyway, anyway. So, I said, well, they don't have Lucas. He said, well, get something else. So, I go in the store and I get something else. He said, now, you got to pour that in your gas tank and then fill it up with premium. I'm like, everybody keeps saying that. How I know it's going to work? My manual say unleaded only. It don't say premium. I'm going to file my spark plugs out. See, I remember that from when I was younger. You don't put the right gas in there, you're going to file your spark plugs out. What does it mean? I really don't know. But I, I know I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to file my spark plugs out. So, but I didn't have no choice because my car was on E. And it's, she's talking about it's cutting off. And I got to ride all the way 11 miles from Chapel Hill. You might as well have was in Chapel Hill. I got to ride up there. And I just got off work. So, I, I did it. And I was like, God, please, please let this work, Lord. Please let it work. All right. Put it in there. We're getting on down the road. I made it. As you can see, I'm here today. I made it with no problems, and my car hadn't cut off since. All right, so <clears throat> moving on. So right after Kiana got out of the hospital, my sister went to the hospital. My sister Nene. Oh, she went to the hospital, and she checked. They checked her in. I can't remember what day it was. They checked her in, but the next day they wanted to cut her leg off. And she went in because her leg was hurting. And she had um, a busted wound on her foot. Her foot has been giving her lots of problems. You know, with weeping sores and, you know, busting open and all that stuff. So they told her they wanted to cut her leg off the next day. She made a decision, and she still means it, that she's not getting her leg cut off because she's not going to the grave with one leg. She said she's not going to the grave in pieces. So, because once they start chopping off one thing, then they keep chopping off other stuff. Now, I can honestly say I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. So she was like, no, I'm not getting my leg chopped off. So you might as well just send me back home and I'll be in pain until I die. Because I'm not I'm not giving up my leg. So we she and I talked about that and we started talking about funeral arrangements and wishes and things like that and we had the conversation. If that's what you want, that's what you want. But I was doing a whole lot of praying. And so was my mama. So was everybody else. Because she was dead set on not getting that leg chopped up. She still ain't got it chopped up. But, so I was going to the hospital to see her. Mom was going to see her. And her kids were going to see her. And, you know, she and I would talk on the phone every day about, you know, so what are you going to do and what this and that, laughing and stuff. I'm trying to keep her spirits up. I'm trying to plan a mock funeral, but in, in you know, in, in a humorous way. But that's how my family and I are. You know you can't have this. No, your fake friends can't come. We're not eating after your funeral. You know, that type of stuff. She's like, what? Yeah, that's how it's going. So you want to be cremated or buried? And when she's like, well, it's cheaper. Well, if you do, you know what I mean? We were talking about those things and laughing. All right. Well, I picked up some, uh, I started reading the benefits of coconut oil and avocado oil. Raw coconut oil, raw avocado oil. So I'm like, well, I'm, I'm going to start taking this myself. So I went to Walmart, and it's called Cocova, Cocova. That's what it looked like on the pack anyway, C-O-C-O-V-A. Anyway, I got it from Walmart. And it's just, it has two ingredients, no preserves, nothing. You read the back, two ingredients, raw coconut oil and avocado oil. So I started, I'm going to say eating it, because, <laughs> because I take a big gob of it, and uh, like three tablespoons, a little bit more than that. I feel the bottom of a plastic cup. A styrofoam little coffee cup, I fill it up by about half an inch and I drink it. Or I take it cold 
when it solidifies and I just get a big hunk out of it and I swallow it. So I started thinking about my sister and I'm telling her about it. I'm like, I'm about to eat some coconut avocado oil and, and you know, get that in you. And we'll, you know, see what happens. Got a lot of health benefits. So we're gonna see what happens. But I told her some things she needed to change. You know, you gotta stop smoking. But that's you know, hardening your arteries and constricting and you need all the blood flow you can get in your, in your legs and in your feet. So we just talked about a bunch of different things. Um, and then I went over there and I took my anointing oil and went over there and I rubbed it all over her foot. Sarge that in her foot. We prayed and I told her the whole bunch of prayers in this anointing oil in this bottle I got and uh, that I've read out loud in the Bible years ago. And so I said, we're going to put this on there. So I rubbed that on this olive oil. So we rubbed that all on there and prayed and stuff. Well, I've been praying. Your mama been praying. Well, she's like, I said, well, let me, let me really, really look at your feet. So I'm rubbing her feet and she's laughing, putting the oil and stuff on, the anointing oil and stuff on. And she's laughing. I said, what are you laughing for? She said, because I feel that. I said, you feel all that? And she said, yeah, I feel all of that. And you're killing me, man. So, because I was all twin her toes on the flat part of her foot and on the heel. And, and she's just laughing. So I said, so you got feeling in your foot? She said, yeah, I feel all of that. I said, and your color look good on your feet other than it's rusty. You put this oil on and shine it up like a shiny penny. And um, I, we did that. But prior to that, I sprayed a bunch of um, peroxide all on her feet. And it bubbled up and all that. And I told you, you need to take care of your feet. You got to wash your feet more often. So I washed her feet for her. And then I put the oil on. And um, she was like, what well, dog? Well, look at that. My feet look like they're brand spanking new. Cause I can almost be a foot model. You know, we laughed about that. Because she missing her big toe. They cut it off um, last year, I believe. But last year, the year before. And now uh, she got some other toes that they took the bone out of. So it's just a toe. It just looks like a toe, but it don't have a bone. It don't have bones in it. So it just kind of flop around. So we laughed about that. And and she's like, I'm not giving them my leg, Kim. This is a perfectly good leg. I'm like, well, it looks like a perfectly good leg, but what's going on with the inside of it? She say, it's perfect. It's fine. And I said, okay, all right. We're not going to talk about it no more. Well, doctor came in. She's been in the hospital now for about a week. She gets to go home today. So she's been in the hospital about a week. And uh, now about maybe about a week and a half. I don't know. Maybe about a week and a half. Anyway, so the doctor and uh, came and looked at it. The one that wanted to cut it off. And there was a lady from the CDC. She came and looked at it. And uh, they told her that the tissue was growing back. I'm like, oh, you're healing. The tissue's growing because see her tissues wouldn't grow back real easy. If she get a cut or nick, it'd be a long time. And she stepped on a nail, I think, maybe four about four years ago. I ain't gonna say five, I'm gonna say about three or four years ago when she stepped on a nail and went through a shoe. That's why all her trouble began. Rusty nail never did heal up real good. And if it did, it didn't stay. So I told her she also had to throw her shoes away because when her foot foot would bust, you know, all the infections that were going to shoe. And I'm like, you can't keep I said, Did you do you wash your shoes? And she was like no, not really. I said, well, you can't keep putting the same shoe on that's got infection in it. You got to throw that shoe away. So she's getting rid of all her shoes. And then my daughter, Candace, bought her some um, coach tennis shoes. I'm told she needs some diabetic shoes. So she's going to get all that stuff. Anyway, so the doctor and the CDC lady told her that her foot, the infectious disease lady, were telling her that her foot tissue is healing. And she's getting new tissue. So we were so happy. We are so happy. So now they're not cutting off her leg. Her foot. But they didn't want to cut off her foot, they want to cut off her leg up to the knee. She was like, I'm not giving them a perfectly good leg when I still got feeling and color in it. And she didn't, and it's healing. So she gets to go home today. So we're thankful to God for that. Now, during the course of my sister being in the hospital, and I'm not saying these things to make myself a victim, like it's all about me. I'm definitely not. I'm just talking about, I just want you to see how things change from day to day. In, in, in people's lives. So last Sunday, was it Sunday? Last, oh, the wake was on Friday, Saturday. Saturday passed at the concert. Put my thing down. Got a whole bunch of antennas and stuff. Might be the cops, I don't know. Yeah, he just driving an old star skin hutch. Anyway, um, okay, so anyway. So I went to a funeral last Saturday of one of my good friends, Bobby. 
Bobby was a sweetheart. Funny, down to earth. But well, Bobby died suddenly. He was 49. I guess it, hits home, it, it hit home really hard for me because we were 49. And his birthday was going to be on the 29th, but he died on the 25th. Died on the 25th. He had that weekend off from work by another good friend of mine. And that's just how it went. It went suddenly. You know, tomorrow I'm not promised to you. He's 49. And he just died suddenly, I believe they say. Sitting in the truck talking to somebody in his pickup truck. And then he just died. So I went to that funeral. It was really sad. Grandkids were tore up. I mean, everybody was. It was just sudden. And, and, and it still has me in disbelief. So Bobby's gone. Resting with God. Then, see, I found out that not yesterday, but the day before that, um, yeah, the day before, what's the day? Today's Saturday, Friday, Thursday, that another friend of mine, I was good friends with his sister, but that whole family's gone now. That was in that household. That whole family is gone. Um, he got, Melvin got hit and killed by a car crossing the street, 705 in the morning or 7 o'clock in the morning. Well, the reports at 7.05, he was hit and killed by a car, trying to cross the street. And Melvin used to work downtown doing his own thing, you know. He would be down there and he would go and clean windows for money, for extra money. All the shopkeepers, he cleaned their windows. And he'd been doing that for years. So he had his own hustle going on, his own thing. But he was hit and killed by a car. And uh, he died on, his, on the scene. So, before him, though, it was his, his sister died. His sister was taking care of his mother, who had Alzheimer's, a little bit of Alzheimer's. Well, she had Alzheimer's, not a little bit. She had Alzheimer's. And then when she died, the mama died, like, three months after her daughter died. Because that's who was taking care of her. Melvin was a taking care of her. Her daughter was. So, she died three months after her daughter. And then Melvin's brother got hit and killed by a car on his bike. He had just got out of prison. He hadn't been out of prison for like two months. And he got hit and killed by a car right there at his house. And uh, he died. Of course, he died when you get hit and killed, you die. But he, he, he died on the scene. And and then, then Melvin. Melvin's brother, Melvin's brother just got killed last year. Yeah, it was last year. I'm going to say about, yeah, about a year ago. Not even a year ago. Almost a year ago, his brother got hit and killed by a car around the corner from their house while he was riding his bike. And, and Melvin's, Melvin was about maybe 55, 60. And his brother, his brother might have been in, in his early 60s. But, but then now Melvin, you know, he's gone. He got hit and killed by a car a couple days ago. So it just, it just makes me look at how short life really is. You just don't know from day to day to day what your life holds or what's in store for you or if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Any of those things. You just don't know. But I believe you have to live life to the fullest. Life to the fullest. That's what I believe. To the fullest. Do the best you can do. Try some things you ain't never tried before. Go some places you ain't never been. Try some stuff. Move around. Enjoy life. Experience life. Well, I don't see any more updates. I know all that was sad. Sorry, guys. But that's just what's been happening in my little world. In my circle of friends. Let's see. Loving the job. Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. Uh, oh, my sugar. Let me tell you about that. All right. So, I'm in a program at the job. A diabetes management program. Y'all remember I told y'all my sugar used to be like a 200s in the morning, 3 in the morning, and it's been in the 500s. So, and where things are cloudy and I see rainbows and, you know, I have to watch TV, you know, with the lights off. Well, I, um, I haven't been drinking. So, I just kind of, you know, stepped away from that. I'm not saying I quit, but I haven't been drinking hard liquor um, or beer. I stopped drinking dinner wine long time ago and uh, so I, my numbers dropped my numbers dropped then I paid attention to what my friend girl said I mean my friend girl at my last job 
you know, they were like, Kim, stop drinking cranberry juice on your way to the bathroom. Let's see where your numbers are. All right, so I stopped doing that. And Mama gave me a lot of advice to eat more green leafy vegetables. And uh, I don't have to eat meat all the time because sometimes meat raises your sugar, she told me. So you don't have to eat meat every day. So um, then I noticed that my numbers had gotten down to the 285s in the mornings. I'm like, okay, 285s. I wasn't in the three, four, five hundred. So 285s. And I stopped eating, trying not to eat late. I try not to eat at I realize my body digests food real slow. That's what I'm thinking. So, um, so that got me like down to that. My medicine like I should two times a day. Two.